All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Bat Phil. And all I'm going to say for this video is some of you are going to be turned off and be like, I don't need to listen to this. I already know these things. I'm going to tell you right now that everybody has been farming chromium transistors the wrong way, and I'm here to set the record straight. I think we all understand rhodium heat sinks, but this is part three of the relic farming guide. Uh, I want to get that out there. I want to get you hooked into this video, so hopefully you enjoy it. Like, subscribe, comment. Again, channel members, this is my call to all of you. Thank you so much for your continued support. I'm not showing the graphic in hopes that this is a trigger for future channel members, that I'm not trying to alienate anybody. But we're going to celebrate our King Wampa that at the time of recording, we're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers. If we do that, Wampa will hit Relic 9. So channel members, thank you guys again. I do appreciate it. I'm going to give you your shout out, even if your graphic is not going up on the screen for this series. So let's get pop over to our Relic Farming Guide. In part three today, we're going to be covering chromium transistors and erodium heat sinks. Let's get into chromium transistors. This is literally the easiest piece to obtain. The only thing you have to do here, the con, is it takes diligent, diligence to save a little bit of your guild tokens. My recommendation with these is going to be be smart with your guild tokens and you will never have to farm any of these from any other source. And that is the truth. And this is a piece that I think so many players get wrong. I'm going to show you guys that by flipping back over to the game here in a second. So the Chromium Transistor, the popular salvage here, you only want to use this first piece. Don't ever do this second piece. Only use the first piece, right? The second piece and the fourth pieces here are not ideal because they require gear needed for carbonite circuit boards. Let me show you guys that. I think everybody always talks about, oh yeah, go craft this, go craft this, and they think they're all cool. Like, and then they're like, I'm running out of carbonite circuit boards, and I don't know why. Well, if you come over here and you look at this piece, and I go to craft it, do you know what you need this Mark II Fabrotech data pad for? Right? Do you know what you can trade that in for? Carbonite circle boards. Do you know what you can trade? I mean, not that any of us actually have this piece anyway, but do you know what you can trade these in for? Carbonate circle boards. Right? It, do not, do not craft that piece anymore. Stop doing it. You can get these pieces out of the guild store all the time. Right? They're not in there for me right now. Of course, I've got a screenshot to prove that they are there. But you can get these out of the guild store all the time for 150 guild tokens. You get 10 of them at a time. Look at that. 33 chromium transistors. Show you math, all that stuff. I just do not do this. This is how players run out of relics. You think you're being smart. You think you're being good and doing this crafting thing. And you're taking away stock from a relic source that is so much more difficult to build than chromium transistors. So just want to get that out there off my chest right now. You only want to use that first piece, right? This is the only thing you need. Just look at, if you did this once a day, if you did this once a day, that every single time this pops up, this is the only thing we're going to cover here. If you do this once a day, you're going to get 33 chromium transistors a day, 12,000 a year, 12,000 a year. You don't use 12,000 of these in a year. It is almost impossible to use 12,000 of these pieces in a year. If you did this every third day right so you buy one of these every three days you still end up with four thousand chromium transistors in a year why would you do anything else i am so passionate about this because i see time after time after time players coming in and i'm gonna craft this piece i'm so cool and it's like stop use your guild tokens use your head this is one of those pieces i don't know if you guys can hear my cats freaking out right now they're even mad at you this is one of those pieces that I think everybody thought they were so smart and so cool and saying, oh yeah, go craft these things. And I'm pretty sure I fell into that trap too. And then I got to thinking like, why am I running out of carbonate circuit boards? And I started looking into some of these things. And that's when I saw it, that this here, everybody just bypasses this. They're like, why would I ever buy that? This is why. The Capital Games did this so intentionally. They knew that everybody overlooks this piece. The most valuable piece in the game. This is all you should ever do for for chrome transistors and you will literally never run out what i didn't mention in part one is that while i'm not talking about your getting these with your assault battles you know conquest things like that that's because i view that and again i'm going to cover this all in a later chapter but i'm going to get it now because i know comments are going to be fuming i'm going to cover that all in a kind of 
I'm gonna I decided this is gonna be part seven um, where I kind of just cover everything and kind of explain some of those other sources and how I view them so anyway that will happen but chrome transistors again just all you need is this if I can drill anything into your brain it's this piece right here and just to show you like how many of these you can get at a time right so I've got 49 of them to trade in here so right there we're gonna get hundred sixty three of these bad boys look at that I mean just chef's kiss right gotta love it gotta love it there let's get back over to the spreadsheet so erodium heat sinks so literally everybody knows this trick and if you don't well you're learning it for the first time the thing with this is that it requires you to purchase these using your mark one raid currency what you're going to notice in this guide is that instead of me telling you every little way you can get this piece and this piece and this piece I try to make sure that you have the tools necessary to say, this is the way that Fat Phil does it. This is the way that I recommend it. My recommendation is buy some of these every single raid. Get into the habit of purchasing these early on in your career, and you will be so much better off down the road. Popular salvage, you only ever craft Mark III hollow projectors. You literally only ever do this. Do not do anything else. I don't care what anybody else says, only ever do this, okay? This is another one you only ever do this only thing you need and what i'm showing here right with 130 guild tokens it's not that much if you bought 10 pieces every single day which is not that crazy to think about just for perspective here to show you you do this once a week right once a week 130 times seven once a week or every day for a week you're only spending 910 Mark One raid currency. That is nothing comparative to what you get in that raid. So don't think that that's a lot. It is not that much to do. It's going to take you two days to get to a full piece. You need 20 of these heat sink, you know, 20 of these hollow hollow projectors for a full piece. So you're going to get two heat sinks a day, right? You're going to. It's going to take you, uh, to, you know, what? What was that? Hold on. I'm. Oh yeah 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 yeah. You're gonna get two and a half heat sinks a day based on what you get out of that, right? So over the course of the year, you're gonna get 912. If you bought 20 of these a day, if you just went and said, hey, you know what? I'm gonna buy 20 of these a day, 1800 in a year. Yeah, they're not that hard to do. Let me show you, Oops, excuse me, sorry. Let me just go into the game here, right? We're gonna show you this in action. So look, if I trade in 20, look, I get two I get two Arodi meat sinks if I trade in 20 salvage. But if I come in here and I craft, right, which I need 20, so there's my there's my 20. And I come up here and I put this in, I get five. This is the trick. This is all you ever need, right? This is all the only thing you ever need to do here. Convert this, boom, I'm done. Look at that. Rocking and rolling. That is that is the only thing you need to do in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. That's that's the way to do it, right? Something else that I probably haven't mentioned up to this point that I should, but you know, so much to cover. Do you see this little button right here? This allows you to lock pieces, right? This allows you to say, don't ever let me use that piece to craft into something that I want to make. So for example, you notice how I've like, I'm gonna lock these pieces that I don't ever wanna use this piece and I don't ever wanna use this piece, right? So look, I can't even come in here and say, look, this item has been locked. So you can't accidentally trade these in. See, I can't accidentally trade in my Carbonis or Stun Cuffs, right? But look, I can click on these, but I can't click on these. So you can use this for any manner of gear on any level of these things to ensure that you don't accidentally spend it. That's a little tip and trick of the trade there in this one. This is, these two pieces, right? As I said in, you know, part one for um, Carbonite Circuit Boards, Bronze and Wiring, that it's not rocket science, it's consistency. With these two pieces, almost think of the op, you know, like uh, think of Admiral Akbar, how he's like, it's a trap, except that, you know, it is a trap that, you know, these pieces are a trap. If you don't do the right thing, if you fall into the trap, you are gonna just hurt yourself in the long run. So I feel like a lot of people were at least knew this one, but probably were going about getting these in the wrong way. You need to think about it again, the full picture how are you utilizing all of your resources to obtain these relics you can't just rely on using nodes for everything or 
mark one raid currency, mark two, whatever. You've got to spread it out so that way you don't spread yourself too thin and you're getting enough relics to continue to keep up with the ever-changing meta and needs in Galaxy of Heroes. So that's the end of this video, guys. Again, we talked about our chromium transistors. We talked about our rhodium heat sinks. There it is. So thank you guys so much. I love all you. May the force be with you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.